Steve Bell, resident analyst with TU Automotive, and I am here at TU Europe, and we are talking with Fabian Kuhn, director of global accounts for uh, Gizik and Devriant or GD Mobile Security. That's correct. Uh, welcome. Steve. Thank um, you very much. So, this morning there was a large focus on connectivity in the vehicle and the the challenges with with doing connectivity. Um, Robert Langter talked about the fact that the car had at least 10 major issues associated with getting connectivity going, which I think you listened to as mm -hmm. well, right? I did. Um, so one of the challenges that, that surfaced is eSIM. Um, so so what, are you, what are you guys doing, because you're big in eSIM, right? what are you doing? Um, uh, <laughs> So uh, it's correct, we're um, very big in eSIM, we're actually uh, one of the first ones uh, in the market um, and providing those solutions. So uh, GND is coming from uh, an area where um, a large customer base of us is uh, mobile network operators um, that uh, do have um, SIM cards and we're providing those SIM cards to the market and uh, the next logical step going to the automotive sector was of course providing automotive grade solutions, uh, means um, SIM cards that fit into that um, purpose, for example for e-call, for connectivity services um, that are embedded into the car and uh, the next uh, step from there on was of course to be able to manage those cards um, so really providing eSIM management solutions together with the eSIMs in order that the OEMs um, are able really to manage those SIMs in the field and uh, do updates and um, online services or provide online service and additional features for the convenience of the users um, but also um, leveraging the security for the OEM side itself. So, so the eSIM is managed by the OEM and not by the, the mobile operator, is that the premise of that? It, it, it is moving to that direction actually, so um, there are um, a couple of uh, customers of ours that do have um, their own eSIM management system, uh, which is a managed service hosted by GND Mobile Security. And uh, it, it, currently, there's still a lot of um, OEMs still using the um, eSIM management solutions that are provided or offered as a service um, by the MNOs. So um, it's a shift um, in that paradigm. It used to be MNOs offering those services. It's moving more and more into the um, area that the OEM wants to own the SIM card. They want to be uh, the one. Um, being able to decide who is going to be the MNO that is going to reside on the eSIM and uh, when is going to be a shift and also be more flexible in terms of uh, the market legislations in different countries coming up where specific um, operate, uh, uh, profiles are required, um, local profiles for example, taking Brazil as an example cars go into that country and then you need to have a local profile from a local mobile network operator and in order to have a streamlined production, they just have one box and then the management solution behind it pushes a new profile into the car and provides there the connectivity. So what is there? Is there a resistance to the adoption of the eSIM from, from the automotive manufacturers or are they embracing it? It's a, a very good question. It's a, they're not really the... Um, oh, let's, let's rephrase. So um, it's on the one hand the OEMs that really enter a new market. Uh, we heard it today in the morning um, in one of the keynotes that yeah. you just mentioned. Um, one of the issues is, um, of course, that um, there's a, a new market uh, now opening up for the OEMs, which is the whole connectivity part. Uh, but now the OEM wants to enter in that market and wants to understand that market and wants to provide uh, or let's say leverage his own offerings and also the use experience really make it much easier for the user or the car owners in the end to have those solutions. But it's a new market and the OEMs, uh, they don't, they used not to really fully understand that market. They're coming from more from a mechanical point of view right. and now it's going to the connectivity world. So GND, mobile security is there, it's like kind of a, the trusted anchor point on the one hand having the uh, knowledge of the eSIM um, part and uh, the knowledge of the m and market, but also the knowledge now of the OEMs. So we're also providing consultancy services um, and to the OEMs, to the tier one suppliers also that need to build the solutions around that um, for the OEMs, you know that you have a fit um, solution for that market. So one of the other things that you've been introducing, I think is the, the dual SIM, uh, or you know, dual SIM, dual active. What, what does that mean? because it sounds um, sort of like dual-dual. Mm. 
Um, it's actually, Steve, it's exactly that. So it, you have um, basically in the car um, two SIM cards um, or two eSIMs um, embedded. That's uh, the scenario. And it's actually two aspects actually that make it interesting um, for the OEM to build such a solution. On the one hand, um, it's a lot of uh, user experience that you gain um, for your own customer base um, because you have now, a, on the one hand, the eSIM that is already embedded into the car, providing the services, um, connectivity services, traffic information, real-time tra real traffic information, but also connected services um, and e-call systems. Um, but on the other hand, um, the user that, that it drives the car, he has his own data plan. So he has a smartphone, he has his um, connect, uh, connected services data plan already with his M&O hooked up. He pays a monthly fee for that one. So he wants to have his own data being also used in the car. Means he wants to use Spotify or for, let's say, right. Other passengers, ideally not for the driver, offer um, additional services like Netflix, like YouTube, um, streaming directly inside of the car, but taking those data plans years already. So the, um, there are scenarios like um, shared data managers, um, we have uh, different costs involved in that one, but it's always additional costs to subscription that you always already pay actually as a consumer. So uh, the idea here is, you have on the one hand the eSIM that is already there with providing the services um, for the OEM. It's always online and you have another eSIM embedded into the car that you can now use and to download your own profile or basically kind of a copy of the profile. It's not a real copy from a technical point of view. Um, to the car it means you have now basically two SIM cards, one in the smartphone and the other one in the car that work together. And uh, now you can choose, um, for example, also to call um, through the car directly or um, stream through the car directly with the same data side. That's from the consumer experience, fantastic. But also has a, um, a very large advantage actually for the OEM itself. And um, one of the things now with the um, shielding and the newer cars going on, so they always, they're more and more shielded um, from the connectivity. So um, if you have a normal smartphone connected by a Bluetooth to the car, it's uh, difficult now to really get a very good con connection and in the future it's getting worse and worse. So the idea here is really to use the external antenna of the car, but don't use any um, plug-in solutions uh, or something like that, but you just have the car, you have your profile transferred to the car, to a second SIM card, and it uses the whole infrastructure of the car, it means the whole modem, the antenna, the external antenna, you have a fantastic reception, and you have um, also for the OEM still the possibility to use the um, online services, and the consumer has the fantastic option to use his own data plan, right. and be flexible, it means uh, in terms of, it's not something attached to the car um, owned by me, but it could also be my partner um, that also wants to drive the car. He enters the car, it's automatically changing the subscription, to the one that he already has downloaded to the car. So how does how does I mean if the does it does it activate because you're in the driver's seat? If you've got two car two people walking into the car, one's on the on the passenger side, one's on the driver's side, but they both used the car mm -hmm. previously. How how does the car know which profile to take? That is something that really um, can be decided by the OEM, um, how they want to enable that one for the consumer so the side. Experience. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's um, really decided by the consumer or the driver itself um, what kind of pr preferred profile he would like to use. Could be the owner's profile is always number one profile um, or something, something like that. But it's something that can be just um, turned on and adjusted. Does, does it take long to, to recreate the profile on the on the dual action to sim i mean is it something that is it a five minute thing or is it instantaneous um it, it's in between that um it's very fast actually so um, you go into the into the car um, you connect um, to the car and um, the enablement of that one that's something that the oem itself can decide how they want to do it um, with a barcode um, with a code that needs to be entered right um, but the transfer and the download um, over the air from the subscription management server to the um, car itself is uh, quite fast the um, enablement as well, so it's a kind of a thing of uh, a very few minutes um, that you have everything set up. It's, I would say, something like two minutes um, only, but it's um, because there's uh, some processes involved in that one. But that's it. You only do this once, 
um, the next time you don't have to do it anymore. So it's um, only this one, uh, one time process. So there is this recognition that the phone is important to the consumer and clearly you're transferring data into the, into the car mm -hmm. or the profile. So you're not using the battery on the, on the phone as much because you're using the infrastructure of the car. Correct. Right? So Bluetooth isn't enabled and all of that. Mm -hmm. But equally, you're, you're also talking about using the phone as a digital key for the car as well, right? Correct. So this is um, uh, the second step that um, creates a much more user experience and um, comfort, actually. So um, uh, that you have a use your smartphone and um, have the security and uh, the protection inside of the smartphone um, to securely access the car means that you have uh, your key downloaded um, to the smartphone and you can access that one directly by opening um, with the smartphone. This um, goes, um, for example, uh, through your connectivity via Bluetooth, it's everything um, fully secured. And the advantage um, here is uh, that you can enable others as well to drive with your car. This is especially you know, going to the car rental or car sharing services at some point. It could be a very high value and very high interest actually because it's very flexible. You can deploy a key from one person or from one smartphone to the other one. You can determine um, a specific length of time uh, where this key is valid. So it means um, only through the weekend you're able to, to access that car and afterwards it's not active anymore and you don't have the possibility to access their one. And once it's ena enabled, uh, the initial processing um, um, to have it personalized to your smartphone, um, it's also quite quick. I guess this could be right. one of the next questions <laughs> <laughs> about the time of that uh, that it takes. This is also a rather quick um, solution that um, is done. Once you have it uh, transferred and the key is there, you have the full flexibility. You can immediately um, open up the car, close the car, um, turn it on and off the engine as well. Right. So that's a very flexible system, but it's... Um, so in a rental car situation, for mm -hmm. instance, the, the actual key will be in the vehicle, but you'll be able to open the, the rental vehicle with your phone. Not necessarily, actually. So. Um, could be one scenario, but the um, other scenario could be the key resides actually within the car rental company itself. So um, when you go to the counter and you first off, um, or you rent a car, you basically um, sign up for all the contracts, for the details, and then um, uh, the person at the counter actually just deploys the key over the year to your smartphone. So you just need to enter this um, your telephone number, and that's it. And then, then you get the key automatically deployed over the air to your smartphone for the specific rental time that you have agreed by a contract. Great. It was going to speed everything up for me, which is great. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. Really appreciate the Thank time. you very much, C, for being here. Thank you.